What's up, metalheads? Welcome to In the Pit with Dimitri and Dick. I'm your host, Dimitri Sparks, and with me is Dick Day Felice. Hey, how we doing? How we doing? Good, good. This is your first time tuning into the podcast. That's only because there are only two episodes and you skipped the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we'd say you might not have missed much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. But, but. All right, man. Today on the podcast, uh, we're going to talk about a band called Meth Leopard uh, in their album, Woke. So, uh, you know, just in case uh, you guys are unfamiliar with this band, this is a grindcore band from... Uh, they're from South Australia, Adelaide, to be exact. Not, not that I'm real familiar with geography in Australia, but that, that's where they're based out of. Uh, but what I wanted I to do... the South. Yeah, I would assume with a name like that, it would be. Um, but, you know, then again, I'm not Rand McNally by any, any means <laughs> here. So uh, what, what I wanted to do, though, before we get too far into that, I want to say how we came about reviewing this record. Uh you know, we were starting to look for some people to review, and we we actually had uh, Wise Grinds had said they anything we were wanting to review, we could take our pick, and uh, came across this record and thought it'd be a good pick. And I wanted to thank Wise Grinds Records for reaching out to us. Um, if you don't know about this record company, this is a company based out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, this particular release, you know, that we're reviewing the Meth Leper record is it's a joint release with a um, couple other record labels here in North America. It was released with a joint release with Bloody Scythe Records. It'll also be released later this year in Europe uh, with Psycho Control Records. And uh, th this this record company, the Wise Grinds, they're all about, um, you know, DIY underground extreme music. Uh, another release they are going to have coming out soon here. It's a split between two bands. It's going to be a split LP, uh, Taiwanese grindcore band Brain Control, as well as the death metal band based out of both the U.S. and Taiwan, Ripped to Shred. So you're going to want to check that out, too. And again, I wanted to thank them for letting us uh, review something out of their catalog here. You can check them out on Facebook, also on Bandcamp and Instagram, Wise Grinds Records. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, and it, I know this is, uh, this is their first LP. Mm -hmm. And they formed in, in 2015. Mm -hmm. And were they with Wise Wise Grind Records at the time? Oh, uh, I, I don't I don't believe so. And you know, honestly, I wish I would have researched that. I could look it up right now though. Um I know they had a lot of splits out actually prior to this. Uh right. and you know, they, they had their demo out in twenty fifteen. And let me just take a look here. I want to pull up their discography so we know all the information on this band. Um, you know, I like splits. You know, you get two bands. Yeah, them. I think it's good. It lets you lets you find a lot of stuff. You know, and that's that's something I don't have in front of me right now. I don't think everything was released on that that label, but you know, a lot of their stuff. They were on some compilations too. Here is the other thing. So they've they've done a lot, uh, a lot of splits, some compilation work, um, but this is their first LP here that's out. So you know this is their first one that's fully them with a full track listing. Yeah, I really like the cover art. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's black and white, and you have uh, you have a whole bunch of stuff going on. You got rockets. Got a koala bear. There's a guy on fire. Yeah. There's a looks like President Trump in the front, yeah. and he's spitting in somebody's mouth. I think that's that's right. that's what it looks like to me. You know, it looks like a, a collage of all kinds of stuff going on. It looks like a little bit of police stuff there, uh, citizens, and just civil unrest. Which, when when you look at some of the stuff this band has put out, that would be in line with what it seems some of their stuff is related to. Uh, you know, with the type of music and the type of songs grindcore type stuff usually a lot of stuff about civil unrest and different things like that is in there but but right. you can tell this band has some humor too one with the name uh that they've chosen meth leopard and two with also uh just even some of the song titles on the record 
uh, there was just some ones in there, you know, like instead of dead Kennedys, you got dead Kardashians and different things, you know, so it's obvious there's a little bit of humor mixed in. Um, but, you know, we're going to come back and re- we'll do like, you know, the review of this album. But, you know, as always, we, we like to shoot the shit a little. So what, what you got going on? I just want to say one more thing about the, the Meth Leopard, uh, the cover art for Woke, is it seems like a grindcore, well, where's Waldo? Yeah, yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff going on on there, and it's kind of like you can see what you can pick out on there, right? Yeah, <laughs> really cool. So, Yeah, so uh, how you been, Dick? Uh, I'm all right, you know, typical, I guess, uh, as far as anything new going on, just, you know, work and, I don't know, you know, typical Floridian stuff, like going going swimming a lot lately because it's so hot here. There's not a whole lot else you can do. What about yourself? Oh, hell yeah. What about you? The heat's been crazy. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you deal with the heat down there. It's uh, Alexa said it was 85 degrees, mm-hmm. and I took the dogs for a walk, and I don't know where it was 85 degrees at because it, it felt like my clothes were going to catch on fire when I went outside. It was just – it was so freaking hot. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I mean, that's how it is here with us, too. It's in but where you're at there, because you're, you know, in Tennessee, you guys are still pretty humid this time of year, too, right? Yeah, hot yeah. and humid. It's, uh, haven't, we're supposed to get a lot of rain coming up, but it's it's just been it's so hot. Like we get that every day here in some form, some days more than others, but a lot of times it's those splash and dash type deals that you get. So I know we always try to structure our outside time of the day around that a little bit here you know but all the humidity so but yeah i got a terrible terrible sunburn yesterday i went i went tubing again i know last time <laughs> this seems to be a recurring tubing. theme for you tubing and sunburns <laughs> I, I know I, i'm not like a fanatic i just happened like i rarely ever go and i happened to go like one week and then i skipped one week and then the next week i went so i went twice in a span of a month, but there's like nothing else going on, and it's only like twelve bucks. You could spend pretty much the whole day on this. Yeah, it's like this little tiny river, and you get on it, and it's fun. You hang out with some friends. You're in a tube, and you know mm. they had beautiful weather yesterday. I mean, it was hot, but mm. you had water to cool you down. Uh, the only thing different last time or yesterday, um, I didn't have didn't have any alcohol. Or last time, I just got yeah. super shit faced. This time here, though, I just drank water because I'm doing this challenge. I don't know if I don't know if you ever heard of it. Uh, it was created by Andy Frisella, and it's called Seventy Five yeah, Hard. I'm familiar with it. It's it's the uh, the deal where it's not well. It packages itself as not an exercise challenge, right? It says it's a whole basic revamping right. of your whole uh, lifestyle and so on, right? Yeah, it's basically, they call it a, a, ment- a mental toughness challenge, and it's for mm-hmm. 75 days. So I think it's just short of 12 weeks, but it has, so it's not only just exercise. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, there's exercise in it, um, but at the end of it, it's supposed to help you gain, like, uh, it's supposed to get like, mental toughness, you know, more confidence, more charisma. Uh, you, you basically go through a transformation, mm-hmm. both mental and physical. Um, and it's just a list of a couple things. There's like five or six things on here. Let me pull up the app real quick. None of it. None mm-hmm. of it's really hard. It's just being able to do it every single day. So this, the all the things that you have to do on here, you have to do it every mm-hmm. day. You can't take a day off. So uh, some of the things on here is that you got to mm-hmm. stick to a diet. So it doesn't matter what diet you can do. You can do uh, the soup diet, keto, uh, paleo. Uh, whatever diet you want, it has to just be something that is a good diet. You know, you can't say that. I'm gonna eat <laughs> well, but, but I mean, but beach every day. Oh, it's a pizza diet, man. But wouldn't wouldn't that, wouldn't that fit uh, with the that, the guidelines? There, he wasn't specific. You could just he wasn't specific on it. I think he did mention someplace on his podcast something about uh, not not to have the pizza diet and. So it has to be something. Yeah, but you don't want to. You don't want to just um, like eat talkies every day, or like uh, what, what else could you? Yeah, you know, the the, the flame. Uh, what, talkies, whatever nitro, or what? I don't know what the flavors are. I just know. I've never had a talkie. Is that like a like a uh, an Andy it's, Cap Fry? Remember Andy Cap Fry? Yeah, like it's not dissimilar to that. I mean, they're okay, but I guess my big thing about like like talkies is, I just. 
any of those kind of snacks, I hate when you're done eating them. No matter what, you got all that powder all over your hands and you wash your hands, but then your hands are stained like, you know, red and all that. I don't know. That, that's my big beef with eating Takis is they get all over everything. You get crumbs all over the place. It's just a mess, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I used to be really obsessed with uh, Doritos. I guess I still am, but yeah. Doritos were like that, too. They get all over your fingers, yeah, and it's like it gets all over the place. Yeah. It ends up getting on your shirt. You go use like 10 paper towels to kind of get it all off. And uh, usually, too, when I'm eating Doritos, it always ends up cutting the roof of my mouth somehow. They're, they're, it's, they're like, it's, it's like, like the, 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 the non peanut butter versions of Captain Crunch. It's like it's like chewing on a bowl full of razor blades. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, it would just like just, just rub off the top layer yeah. of your skin in your mouth. But it, it were so good, like you just take it, you just like, oh, whatever, I'll be in pain. But man, so, I get, I guess, to summarize, time. then your diet for this seventy-five strong, it can't be all talkies and Captain Crunch, then, or all Dorito, whatever, whatever crunchy no, things you favor. Yeah, it's probably not the best diet to be on, but I yeah. mean, to well, what are you own? picking? Paleo, keto? No, I'm doing keto, and I've done it before. It's not, it's not bad. I, I don't really, I've never yeah. really stayed consistent with it. But uh, mm -hmm. for the most part, I can do it, like, throughout the week. I can do it. The hardest part's like, on a yeah. weekend when I'm, like, going out with other people and, and drinking. And people want to get, like, appetizers and stuff. And I'm like, that's when my willpower gives out. Oh, like, oh fuck. Vodka is you know, keto. You know? you just, but I guess that goes that goes against the no alcohol Lucky 75 is. strong deal. So you're, you're just. Well, well, for this. Yeah, if you were just doing keto, you could drink yeah. straight vodka because there's, there's not any carbs in it. But then you drink too much, and then you get drunk, and then you get hungry. And uh, I think most bread. people it's do stuff like you know? that, so it's but, it really is kind of either way you're going to end up going down the wrong path when you start doing all that. So, so that's what's kind of so that's what's kind of good about this program too is it kind of incorporates things that make the the diet successful, right? Like so, if, so if, when you're on keto, mm. so one of the things is uh, no cheat mm. meals and and no alcohol, right? So when you hit a cheat meal, it's like one of those things where you eat a cheat meal and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to eat this one thing and then I'm going to go back. And then you eat that and then it just kind of snowballs and you're down a whole week where you just ate you know, <laughs> pizza and talkies, right? And and then this year is no alcohol too. So you you don't have the alcohol piece where like even when you're drinking alcohol, like you could drink you know, vodka or, or even like a mix of Or really like most beer beers, drink, I guess. It doesn't have a lot of carbs. Light in. beers aren't really... Unless you're drinking heavy craft beers. Heavy craft beers like have a decent yeah, amount of carbs. Yeah, it tastes pretty like you're, much. you're drinking bread almost on some of those. You know, those real heavy ones. But when you start drinking those, like you drink like at least five or six, and that's like yeah. you know, 12, 12 carbs right off the bat. So it's kind of good that you're not doing the alcohol. Uh, the other thing, oh, the other thing on mm -hmm. here too is um, drink one gallon of water a day. That's been the toughest part so far. Because I didn't realize how little water I drank. Uh, prior to this, uh, I just would drink like it, periodically throughout the day, and I drink coffee. Mm -hmm. But drinking a gallon of water now is pretty difficult, and I end up forgetting. And then right before yeah, bed, I end up yeah. chugging like well, that's, 64 ounces of water. I know that's been always my classic problem because I drink a lot of water, but then I wake up about a hundred times a night. So I don't know. Like that's that always is a little bit of a negative of staying hydrated as you seem to wake up to piss all the time. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, and then you go and it takes you a million, feels like hours to fall back to sleep, even though it's probably 10 minutes, but it just feels all disjointed. Right. So I guess my question is, would you say that you feel that challenge has an element of built-in success then with all the different stipulations? Well, if you, by looking at it on paper, mm -hmm. it does. The, the, the other tough part about it is the consistency of it because you can't, you can't miss mm -hmm. one day. If you miss one day or if you miss one thing on this list, you have to start back at day okay. one. Okay. And it's it's easy to do for like one or two days, um, but not missing a day is where it gets really tricky. And that's where it builds up like the mental toughness. Yeah, right? yeah. Where you have the thing where, you know, you can't quit. You got to keep going, you know, no matter how hard it is. Mm -hmm. And another thing on here too, most people probably find this easy. It's not hard. It's just finding the time to do it is, is to read. Mm -hmm. We only have to read like 10 pages, but it has to be like a nonfiction book. Uh, you can't be reading, you can't be reading, um, I don't know, Disney books. You can't be reading, um, 
you, know, you, you can't you can't read that that scary that book. scary stories book that everyone liked in like element. Scary yeah. stories in the dark. <laughs> yeah, all the, the pictures the that looked like they would have fit in on like a extreme metal kind of album cover, and then they I guess they recently did away with that. Do you remember that? That yeah. It was all like skulls or like skulls eating yeah, there was, like I dead think rats. There was one like that. I remember like, reading the story that I liked. It was about like a scarecrow skinned a farmer and then like put him like on top of his roof or something. There was a picture in the book that kind of had that on it. I think they did away with all that stuff though now. I don't know. But yeah. Was... Probably. Yeah. It was kind of morbid for kids. But it was yeah. Fun. I, I remember. I, think I, had all I, I used to always check them out of the library back in the time. I don't know. Which is probably why I like some of the music I like these days. I don't know. It could be. But maybe. Yeah, because I used to go, it was like scholastic book fairs where they bring yeah, like those yeah. huge carts full of books. The kids were like, ah, I could buy like Clifford the Big Red Dog and I'll yeah. buy scary stories. Uh, and tell them the well, here, here's my next question though with, with the whole challenge. What, have you settled on what kind of workouts you're going to do or you know or? Yeah, so so uh, one other thing on here is you mm-hmm. get to take a progress picture every day. So you take I just take a picture of myself in the mirror. Um, <laughs> fully nude. No, you don't have to do nude. I just get the upper half. I mean, there's no rule against it. Like... To, but no rule against it. I mean, you can have you can bring other people into the picture. It just has okay. to be a progress picture. So you can take your shirt off, you know. Are you going to do the thing where on the first bit. one, like you, um, you puff your stomach out and you don't shave for? Th- the 10 days and you look horrible like you look <laughs> i had chalky dust like all over my stomach i, can't cook it. I had a glob of sour cream like on my chin the first one. yeah you gotta, you gotta make it look a little rough right and uh so you have to do that so the, the other part about mm-hmm. it is you have to do two workouts so both workouts have to be at least 45 minutes and one mm-hmm. workout has to be outside so evidently, the, the workout, the workout outside, yeah. I usually just end up running uh, for forty-five minutes, or or a walk for forty-five yeah. minutes. More walking than running. I run a couple of days a week, but uh, I mean, y- you could basically mm-hmm. do any workout you want to. You don't have to work out and, yeah. and do like heavy lifting, squats, and things like that. You can just you could walk both times if you want to. Two forty-five minute walks, um, or you could do yoga. Uh, you could do anything mm-hmm. as long as it's okay. some type of a workout. Yeah, so those are the two types of workouts I normally do. A second workout, I go to the gym and I lift weights. I usually yeah. just do like one month. I remember, day. well, me and you have always had differing opinions on, on weightlifting because I remember back in, in college, we used to get on you about your type of workouts, right? Like the biceps. That biceps and what else what you no matter what it was that you do you go what you guys don't like this I, like, it's not, I don't know but i remember we used to just bust your balls about biceps all the time back then <laughs> no no i mean i guess the gym wise pretty simple like what kind of gym uh, work out at now? it's not bad uh the one i go to is like a, a newer one. Oh yeah so they go a lot of like how, shit in the back how like, is like it? battle ropes and yeah. there's this thing it looks like a big like spool of rope that you, you just mm-hmm. pull down and it winds back up. They got like kettlebells, like oh, bars, yeah. and some other shit like that. So it's got some newer stuff in it. You know what, man? Like when I used to go to the gym like 15, 20 years ago, I used to go in and it was like people would go there and just work out, right? And mm-hmm. they would have like they didn't have any technology, they didn't have smartphones or or nothing like that. I mean, I guess maybe you had MP3 players then, but the people now, they're just, I don't know, there's just like a whole new level of annoyance when I go in there, because there's people that, like, you'll go in, and there's only so many, you know, I have to go in there and do squats on the on the Smith machine, right? Because it's basically the only place you can, you can do squats in there that have has mm-hmm. a, a place for you to put heavy enough weight on there, but now you got people that go underneath there, and it, it, they, they take video calls. Oh, they, yeah. they, they're, they're on the phone with somebody, and you know, like I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to get in there, right? But they don't seem to care. And I see like a lot of people do this. You know, like people call in and they, they accept the call. Like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, not much at the gym. Mm. No, yeah, sure, I can talk yeah. to you. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. There's only like seven people waiting for me, but you know, this is important. So that yeah. type of person there, yeah, I get a lot of that. Um, it's mm. pretty annoying because before you didn't have that, and. Now you have a lot more people just, you know, fucking around, looking on Facebook, checking Instagram, taking selfies, yeah. taking pictures of themselves, you know. Very annoying. 
Yeah, yeah. Another annoying person, too, I, I, I don't know why, but this person annoys me the most, is the guy that does the lunges in the middle of the gym. Like, <laughs> you, yeah, so you mean, like, the guy that'll he'll make it a point to make, like, a spectacle and do them all the way down to, like, the length of yeah. the whole... The, the yeah. lane that you're walking I, I, in, the lane that you're walking in, is like he, he'll go clear across the gym uh, with the with these dumbbells in his hand doing lunges, and I always seem to like end up being in his way. And I guess the lunge guy mm-hmm. has the right away because you have to move out of the way for him. And it's fucking annoying. And then the other annoying person <laughs> too is you have that guy, and you have the guy that runs around the perimeter of the gym, right? Like there's treadmills there. Uh, or you could run outside if you wanted to, but he chooses to run around the parameter of the building, which is again is usually in the walkway. It's usually like where the water fountain's at. We're trying to get water, and people just running right past it, and you have to dodge them. It's very annoying. Well, I mean, like I don't get it. So he goes to a gym, and instead of use any of the the different types of equipment that you can do that on they just run yeah. do they use like do they do like a machine then run like are they saying they're super setting or whatever i, I mean i'm just trying to get wrap my head around i have it. no idea what they're doing they'll just they're, i've seen this maybe three times it's not as common as the lunge guy but the run around the gym guy mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's like a warm-up or it could be a part of a super set i would make the most sense right because you're in the middle of doing bench presses and then you want to run but it's annoying yeah. either way I, I don't, I, you know, but these kind of things, I mean, I, I vaguely remember this stuff, but this is always why I'm glad I just, I built a gym in my garage and I, and I don't really ever go to commercial gyms too much anymore yeah. for that. But I mean, fact. for 10 bucks uh, a month, that's what you have to put up with, you know? Yeah, but that's pretty cheap. I don't know. And when it's, you know, it serves its purpose. I'm sure that you can find times of the day to. Get in there and get around all that if you got to. I don't think it's probably the worst. I don't know. But then again, I can't say because I haven't really dealt with it in years. Yeah. But I don't know. I know. I remember the rec center used to be a, a mess. That oh, <laughs> always was some of the dumb stuff people did. A lot of it was just, you know, the typical broing out and talking a lot and, you know, but whatever. Right. I don't know. So, yeah. But how's your Sunday going? It was all right. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think. Went went to the pool, came home, hung out here pretty much all day. Typical lazy, lazy Sunday stuff. How about yours? Yeah, Sunday is a day that is just. It's a I have a day off on Sunday, but it's like I end up doing a bunch of shit I don't want to do, like get groceries. Mm-hmm. Like Sunday is like a grocery yeah. day. If I don't get groceries Sunday, I don't feel like going the rest of the week. So. I gotta make it a point to either go to like Costco or, or Kroger or some place like that. Yeah, and I gotta walk around. It takes up like a good hour of my day uh, looking for shit. Mm. And then uh, usually I gotta work out and stuff too because I'm doing this challenge. And then I gotta do laundry. Laundry sucks. Laundry. There's yeah. never an oh. end to laundry. Like as soon as you get done with laundry, you got more laundry because the shit you're wearing is now dirty. So you just never fucking end to laundry. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty much always just like I know I feel like as soon as I just folded everything I get another pile that just came back in there. It's like working at a laundromat almost. I don't <laughs> it know. It's like, terrible. And then sheets. <laughs> like if you ever have to wash sheets, there was like a fitted sheet. I have no idea how to fucking fold this thing up. And what happens is I'll wash those and dry them, and I'll just toss them on the bed, and they will just will never be folded because my wife doesn't do it. She'll just take them and, and grab them and, and throw them off on the floor. Yeah. Uh, and they just never ever get folded. We'll put them in a closet someplace, just shove them in there. Yeah. No idea how to fold that I fitted sheet stuff. Well, I, I know you're supposed to pinch the corners. I've seen it done, but I never can replicate it. I think it's probably all, like easier to fold a flag than it, like in that weird triangle they always do. Than oh, it is yeah. to actually fold that fitted like sheet with the elastic in it. I don't know, but hey, you're right. Yeah, so you're right. But it's un-American, that fitted you. <laughs> but anything else, though? Like, uh, not really. Um, Sundays are pretty boring. Yeah. Uh, for me, in general. Yeah. I must wish I had some more energy on Sundays to do some other things. Yeah. You know, wish I had some more energy. Mm-hmm. You know, but what would give me energy? You know, I drink coffee. Coffee is usually not enough anymore. You know what would really help me out? Some meth. I'm talking meth leopard, right? 
meth leopard music, uh, especially the album Woke. Uh, if you listen mm. to this album, it, it'll pep you mm. up. It, it'll uh, put a little... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, in this particular climate, it is a word that gets thrown around a lot. Um, you know, and it, the, the name of the album, but I do guess... You know, I, I take from some of the stuff there are political connotations in some of the things with the band, uh, as there are in a lot of grindcore bands. Um, but, you know, like I said, the one thing I noticed with this particular band, they do have some humor mixed in there. So it's not one of those records that's just straight, you know, not that I care. I, I don't mind. I, I'm fine with political stances and band stuff. Uh but, you know, sometimes when it's just that's the whole record over and over and there's no like kind of breaks of that, it gets it gets tiresome. But I, I did I did like this record. What were your thoughts on it? Pretty good. Pretty, uh, you know, mm-hmm. gr- grind core at its finest. The album's not too long. Mm-hmm. Um, I think almost every song on here is, is, is probably a minute or a little bit minute, a little bit, before, a little bit less than a minute. Um, in in general, I, I thought that the um, yeah, I like that the the yeah. intro kind of starts off slow and, and it's all instrumental mm. and then it kicks into one of my favorite <laughs> named songs of the whole album is Dead Kardashians, uh, which picks up the pace. It's really really mm. hard, really heavy. Kim and Chloe would be terrified of the song. Uh, it's really cool and it kind of keeps up a, a nice heavy fast pace mm. throughout the rest of the album. Yeah, uh, that was one really of my like favorites. On uh, a couple in particular, or you know, like the Ted, Dead Kardashians is really good. Uh, Third Plus or Die, yeah, and, is a pretty good song. You audience. know, and that was what I was gonna say. Uh, the the guitar tone and things like that on this record definitely had a lot of things right. that kind of tips his hat to that. Either like some of the thrash tones you would hear, or uh, like death metal, brutal death metal, you can hear some of those same almost like percussive guitar tones in there. Uh, very crunchy, very, you know, high gain, high distortion, but punchy though at the same time. And that song was a prime example of it. There was a few, there was a few songs that have really good breakdowns on this record. Uh, you know, and, and that was one of those yeah. things, and we had talked about this before, but I like blast beats and I like D beats and I like fast, but I also like when they'll go into either a breakdown or the other track I really liked on here, elitism, how it started out with that crunchy kind of intro with the, the chugging along with, you know, that crunchy guitar tone and the real kind of almost like locked into a groove drumming and then just goes straight out blasting all the way through the end of it. That was one that I thought was a really, really good track on this album. Um, You know, the other thing I would say, and you kind of alluded to it, the drumming on this album, though, I thought was really good. Very, uh, very technical, very fast. Yeah, the first time I listened to it, I didn't even realize there were a two-piece band. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started reading about it and saw that there was just a drummer and a guitar player. So like the opposite of our last review, mm-hmm. Family Vacation, Hella Fucking Sideways, when you had, uh, you know, you just had a drummer and, and a bass player. Yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, it, it was really cool. It, it, didn't, it sounded like you had a full piece band. It sounded like you had bass and guitar. They just, they pulled it off really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the uh, Kangaroo Court was another one. Too. I think yeah. that might be my favorite. Yeah. That one is just a, a great song. Um, well, the beginning of it, you know, it starts off a little slower. And it goes into like a fast, fast paced thrill ride with double bass blasting at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. Really cool. That one. And then uh, I mean, Honey Bucket, Melvin's cover. That was just, that I was going to ask you about what you thought about that because I, I like that song. Um, the one thing, too, and I wanted to say there is a lot of people, I think, in the Melvins are one of those bands that people don't really give enough credit to to the influence they've had on a lot of different bands and a lot of different genres are you familiar with their their work uh, yeah 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 I've, I've listened to them uh king buzzo every once in a while will come to nashville and he does like a solo show. oh yeah. yeah yeah you know what i always thought and well, maybe i shouldn't say but someone will get, i always felt like a lot of the the whole like grunge scene and things just completely ripped off what the Melvins were doing for years. Uh, 
you know, with some of the tones and some of the stuff they were putting into their records. And I know that a lot of them would cite them as a reference or like not a reference. They would cite them as an influence, but I don't think any of them really, to me, I don't know that it was ever really widely known how influential that band was. And it, it comes back right here that here they are on a grindcore record. And I don't know that it, I, I think there's certain things that maybe the genres have in common, but I don't know that you would see a lot of bands covering that song, but it does speak kind of to how influential that particular band was. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not more covers. I mean, this is a really great song by the Melvins, mm-hmm. and there's only two other bands that I know of that have a cover of this. I know Dillinger Escape Plan mm-hmm. has a version of this. And uh, the other one is Burn the Priest. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Mm. They have a version. Now, their version sounds, uh, at least the vocals sound a lot more like the Melvins. Yeah. Version. yeah. And, uh, and the Dillinger Escape Plan has, it, it's, it's a little heavier version. Mm-hmm. But I, I think overall, I like this version the best because it's just a, just a really heavy and, and fast version of that, of that song. Well, well so, I, I mean, really what I was going to say is, that song was aggressive in its own way, but this version of it on this record takes that up like, you know, about uh, as many notches as you really can. This is a probably, it's a very aggressive cover of that, you know, with the vocal style being the vocal style, the rest of the record, that kind of grind chorus, uh, you know, growling vocals. It definitely added a different element, but a really interesting element of this song. I haven't heard the the other two covers though that you mentioned of it, so I'd have to go check those out though to kind of compare it. But I did really like that cover. Yeah, it's a good good song. Um, I think I'm gonna play one of these tracks here. Uh, Kangaroo Court, okay. I think, is uh the one I'm gonna okay. play. We'll, we'll play a little bit of this so you can hear what what uh, Meth Leopard sounds like. That's fucking awesome. I mean, come on. Yeah. I I mean, for for someone that's into extreme music, you know, it doesn't get really a whole lot more extreme than that sound, what they're getting there. And, you know, what I'll say is (laughs) definitely the people that may have thought we were just totally fucking up a, a band's name go it's supposed to be Def Flip well they're no we're not talking about Def Flip we're talking better about than someone Def completely Def yeah I was gonna say you know not that I have any qualms with Def Leppard, but I definitely like Meth Leopard a lot better than Def Leppard myself so, I'm pretty sure you know, pretty sure the drummer of Meth Leopard has, has both arms too yeah I was gonna say I don't think you can blast it like that with only that, one arm so, double bass you know. and then one arm and then yeah. the drum cymbal yeah but, um, you know, and I, I don't know anything else you would add about the record or anything else you want to throw in. I, I mean, I think we're both in agreement. This is a great record for people into grindcore and into extreme music. Um, but I didn't know if you had any other any other things you thought here. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's a great record. If you're into grindcore, I think you really like this record. And if you're just in metal in general, uh, if you're not so much of a, of a grindcore fan, I think you'll still like this just because of some of the uh, the different variation in some of the songs you have. It you know kind of mixes it up a little bit. Like I said, you get that one song it has a little bit of a thrash sound to it. You have some picked up with tempos mm-hmm. and things like that, and you also got a little bit of humor in it. Plus, you got the Melvin's cover of, of Honey Bucket, so it has a little something for everybody. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I think this one is one that really pretty much a lot of metal fans would be into. Like even like guys that are in the you know some of the genres of death metal would probably like this just because some of the tones and vocal style here isn't that far off. And if you're a huge fan of talkies, you will also enjoy. <laughs> talkies, talkies, and original Captain Crunch. You know, you could you could cut the roof of your mouth <laughs> off while listening to this record. Your mouth, it'd your probably mouth sound like bleed. It. Wait, listen. <laughs> this record's so good, it'll make your mouth bleed like a bag of talkies in a box of Captain <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, um. I mean, uh, one thing I did want to reiterate again, I wanted to say thank you, Josh, from Wise Grinds Records uh, for, you know, letting us take a look at this and getting uh, some more information to us, you know, regarding the band, the label. I do say that if you're into extreme music, definitely check out what they got on their label. You can find them on Facebook, Wise Grinds Records, also on Instagram, Bandcamp as well. Uh, you can pick this record up on vinyl from Wise Grinds Records. Uh, so, you know, go check it out. Definitely do that. And I think, though, that a lot of people will definitely be into this record. Cool. This has been In the Pit with Dimitri and Dick. Until next time. Later. All right. Have a good one, guys.